Kia ora everybody, in this video we're looking at 2.12 probability methods, in particular we're focusing on all the achieved questions from that 2019 exam. If you need any further help or resources in relation to these questions in the video, hit me up in the comment section and I'll be able to reply with some resources. So let's start off with question number 17 which we've got posted here. Um, so this one is quite a big question, you can see it takes up most of the screen here. So we've got Sean is interested in how heavy a student's school bag is. So we're trying to look at the, the weight of school bags up there. They've used a random sample of students. He obtained the weight of these, all of them into the nearest kilogram. Um, so we've got the units there. The result of the investigation is up here. And they're also put in the tables down here. Um, we basically been asked to find the probability that a random student chosen from the sample has a school bag that weighs more than 10 kilos. So let's start off with our probability notation. So we're trying to find the probability that X, X being the bag weight, is greater than 10 kilograms. And this question here looks really messy, but it is really a, a simple F over T type question. So we're going to start off with the total, how many students are there in total? And they're given that to us um, down the bottom there. So there are the total males and there are the total females. So um, so we're going to draw a big fraction line. My total was 558, hopefully I'm reading these properly, plus 413. So they represent my total. The people or the F relates to what I'm investigating. So the people who had a bag weight of over 10 kilos. Note it says over 10 kilos, so it actually doesn't include the 10 kilo people. So looking at my table down here, you see 10 kilos, I'm going to cross it out because we actually don't need the 10 kilo one, that's the 10 kilo mark there. We're needing to add up all of the people kind of sitting in this area here. You can see the numbers, um, you've got 2, 5, 4, 1, and we need to add up all of these numbers all the way down. Um, so the best way might be to do it is the 11 people that there was 7. So we're going to put in the 7 here. So it's going to be 7 plus. We're then going to do the same with the 12 kilo that there was 5. Um, and carrying on the table, that's plus 6, plus 1, plus 6, and then plus another 5. Noting a few rows, this row 15 was 0, and the row 18 there was 0. I didn't include any numbers for those because they were 0. So we're now going to simplify our fraction. So the numerator comes to 30 and the denominator comes to 971. And once I've got that, that's acceptable for achieved as well. Or I could convert it to a decimal with some division. And when I did that, I got 0 0.0327. And that they had a 4DP rounding. Okay, we are now on to question number 18, and this is up here, but it does carry on from our previous question 17. So use the table to find the probability that a randomly selected student is male and has a bag weight of less than 2 kilos. Um, so we're going to go probability of um, so less than 2 kilos. Oh, sorry, 2 kilos or less. That's actually a really big difference in the wording, isn't it? So let's write that, 2 kilograms or less, and male. So we're going to follow the same F over T approach to the previous question. So F over T, so we knew the total from last time, all of the students sum to 971. And again, that was from the bottom, adding together the male and the female totals. We're looking for males and less than 2 kilos or less then, so we're looking at these three numbers. You can see they're in the male column, and they're all less than 2. So we're going to be going 24 as our numerator, plus 54, and then plus 60. So adding those all together, the numerator gets me to um, 143. The denominator stays the same, and when you put that into your calculator, we're going to get 0 0.1473. And that there had a 4DP rounding. Okay, we are now on to question number 19. A company produces handmade plates. The weight of these plates can be modeled by a normal distribution. So that's really nice. So that basically confirms we're looking to use our normal distribution skills. It has a mean of this number. It has a standard deviation of this number. Um, and basically find the probability that it's between 415 and 520. So as always with the normal distribution curve, you should start by sketching a graph. 
and you're going to input all your information. So down the middle is the mean. I've drawn that line there. And that there was 450 from the question. Um, up the top here, I always write the standard deviation. It looks a bit like an apple or a circle with a bit of a fringe or a flick. Uh, but that's 35. And my X and Y values, I've been asked for probability between 415. I'm putting this down here because I know it's less than that 450 mean. And 520, which is going to be up here somewhere as well. And similar reason, it's above 5 or 450, so it goes, sits there. Um, I'm going to shade in the area I'm trying to calculate. So I'm trying to calculate this area here and up here all the way down the bottom there. There you go. So that's the probability I'm looking to find. Um, so as I said, I know it's a normal distribution. So I'm going to write normal distribution. On my calculator, remember I'm using the NCD mode. And that will ask us for all the calculator inputs. So our lower is 415. That's the lower limit of my shaded area. I'm then asked for the upper, which is the upper limit of my shaded area, which is over here, 520. Um, finally, down below, I then asked for the standard deviation, which is 35. And then I'm always asked for the mean, which is 450. Um, plugging that all into my calculator. Um, it is, oh, also, it is important to have my notation, right? So the probability that X is between 415 and 520. So I'm pretty mathy with my notation, but you can describe it in a sentence, and that's all good as well. Um, and that there is equal to 0 0.8186, and that there had a 4DP rounding. We're now on to question number 20, and I've left all my previous working because it's kind of relevant to what we're doing down here, but find the probability that a randomly selected plate is less than 400 grams. So same deal, let's draw a quick sketch of my normal distribution graph. So as we said, it had a mean of 450, it had a standard deviation of 35. This time around, we're looking for less than 400. So drawing a line over here, there's 400. We're trying to find the probability of the shaded area down here. So it's going to be a similar process. We need to use the NCD normal distribution part of my calculator. My lower is the lowest bound of my normal distribution graph. I've kind of circled the left tail down there, but we don't actually know what that is. So when that happens, you're just going to do negative a whole bunch of nines. Uh, we'll stop at five in this case. We then need to do the upper, which is that 400, um, because the shaded area stops at 400. And then the same standard deviation of 35, and then the same mean of 450. So notation, we're trying to find the probability that X is less than 400. And we're going to plug that into the NCD mode on the calculator. If you don't know how to do that, I have made a video on it in the past, so do let me know. But when I did it previously, I got 0 0.0766. And that there had a four decimal point rounding. We are now on to question number 21. Don't forget these questions are all from the video link. So let me know if you can't find that or need it. Um, we've got a fundraiser. They're playing a game called game A. So something to do with the dice. The probability of winning game A is 0.6. Um, in dice twice, that's a bit of a tongue twister there. Um, it takes 50 cents to be a part, and you get to play game A twice. If they win both times, they receive $2. If they only win once, they receive $1. What's the probability that a plate receives $2? So that's basically winning um, twice. So um, straight away, as I was reading this question, it's, it's going to be some kind of two conditional events. It's going to be game number one, game number two. So I was thinking of a probability tree. So the, this first branch here, this would represent the game one outcome. So they either win or they lose. Once they've played game one, they'll have game two, which they'll win or lose. Um, and those are two outcomes. So that's game number two. We've been asked for the probability that they receive $2, which is the win-win combination, wasn't it? So this one here would have been the $2 outcome. Winning once, as we said, was $1. And I'm assuming winning to lose-lose, uh, I'm assuming they didn't get anything for that combination. Didn't actually say specifically, but let's make that assumption. So probability that they win um, 
Uh, we now need to do the branches. So we, we do know the win was 0 0.6, which means the loss must be 0 0.4. The win at the top here is still 0 0.6, still 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.4. And we're trying to find this outcome here. So the probability of winning $2 is going to be equal to 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. So if you don't know where that came from, we follow the tree back. And you see the two numbers up there, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. We're going to multiply those together. And that's going to get me to 0 0.36 or 36%. Okay, we're now on to question number 22. Again, I've left all of these here because we need the working. Um, the question simply says, what's the probability that the player receives $1? Um, so that's going to be the $1 outcome here plus the $1 outcome here. So the probability that they receive the $1 outcome is going to be equal to, so the first branch, this one here, that's 0 0.6 times 0 0.4. The second one, um, exact same number, 0 0.4.06, but they're the other way around. So plus 0 0.4 times 0 0.6. Um, both of these come to 0 0.24. And when we add that together, we're going to get to 0 0.48. Um, alternatively, if you just plug that in the calculator as it is, you're going to get to the right answer. So that wraps up all the achieved questions from the 2019 probability methods exam. Hopefully you found this video useful. Um, if you want calculator related videos, particularly for normal distribution, do let me know. I think I made some and I can hunt them down for you. Let me know in the comments if you need those.